Hey, what is happening, everybody? This is Lee Van Dam here, and I'm really excited because I'm going to bring to you one of the builds I've been waiting to finish for a long time, and I'm so happy to be able to share this with you. Uh, just to give you a little background on this, uh, in Diablo 2, I really loved Enchant Sorceress because you got to be a melee sorceress, did a lot of damage with, uh, with a sword, you didn't have to use a staff. And it was really interesting because, you know, your stats went different ways. Spells were really just about dealing damage with your melee attack. It's really cool. And so I'm really excited that that's played into this game. You know, they start off with Spectral Blade. Hasn't been the greatest all the time, but now it's got a really good place based on how the runes are working now to where you can really do some special stuff. So... Without further ado, let's get started. Um, so I want to bring to you my build, which I'm calling Tal Rasha's Mage Knight. Um, it is a melee wizard, and uh, it's, 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 I think it's built really well, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Uh, now, lore-wise, you know, we describe her, her, him as a disciple of Tal Rasha that's not afraid to get his or her hands dirty with melee combat. Their skill set is geared not only for excelling at close quarters, but also neutralizing an opponent's distance as far as a range advantage with strategic spells that bring their victims over to the night with a smile. Well, maybe not a smile all the time because you're going to cut them to pieces, but hey, you know, it's a living. All right, now, the build itself is something where it functions really well once you get some key sets uh, it is it's gear dependent but what's really great about it is the concept works well and it flows together well even when you're starting your journey so I know that I started the series and haven't kept up with it from yellow to orange which was gonna provide different builds that would function at just level 70 you don't have any legendaries and they're all rares to help you farm legendaries and keep growing as you get better equipment uh, which is the from yellow to orange for it but um, happy to say that this is great because this qualifies it works really well uh, later on I'm gonna do some runs without any paragon points and with just all yellow gear I just got the yellow gear together earlier today so I'll post that a little bit after this guide is over Let's go ahead and dig in and start talking about the spells, which is really the meat and potatoes. So uh, the first component is going to be your melee skills. Now, for melee, the two spells that you've got are Spectral Blade and Explosive Blast. Uh, you know, Spectral Blade is really the quintessential melee wizard spell. It's awesome. I'm sure it was put in here to pay homage to the Enchant Melee Sorceress in Diablo 2 because it, it's really there for you just to feel like you're hacking things up uh, while you're playing as a wizard. does a really good job of it. Um, these runes they put on here now are really great. Uh, the rune I've chosen for this is Flame Blades. And with the Flame Blades rune, each enemy that's hit increases the damage of your fire spells by 1% for 10 seconds. Now, that buff adds up really quick and it lasts a long time when you're in the middle of a pack, hacking away, because this build is built to where you can do a lot of it with just hacking special blade and everything else just works as it should. Uh, now, this really ramps up a lot and uh, This really ramps up a lot with gears you pick it up, especially Talrasha's because with two pieces you get a bonus and you get to cast meteors. Um, it'll do it reliably because it'll catch you on the cooldown because you're just hacking with it all the time. Uh, it also gets a really big pick me up from Firebirds uh, from the four piece. And so the explosions there start to deal a lot of damage. So you've got a lot of growth that you'll see just from this alone. And this doesn't cost any arcane power, so it's awesome. All right. Uh, the second part of the melee piece is Explosive Blast uh, with the Chain Reaction Rune. Uh, now the Chain Reaction Rune 
is great. Gives you three explosions at 520% weapon damage is fire. So that already is buffed from hacking with flame blades. Um, and so that's really great. Now, Explosive Blast is special because it doesn't have a casting an animation that interrupts what you're doing. So you're able to use uh, Quincy's technique for the Numlock autocast to keep chain reaction going while you're doing other stuff. So I'm going to demonstrate that now. And I'll have a link for him down below. So you can learn how to set it up. But as you can see, it doesn't matter what's going on. It'll still, it'll still cast and it'll still go off while you're doing whatever. So that's what makes it awesome because while you're running spectral blade and just cutting things up, it's still blowing everything up around you. Getting a lot of damage off of just itself, helping you by casting uh, the meteor whenever the cooldown presents itself in case spectral blades doesn't get it. And it also gets the same boost because it's a fire spell from firebirds when you get that. So really awesome. Really awesome. Okay, so we've got the melee component out of the way. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is range control because these are the things you're going to use uh, for mobs that are at a distance. And you're also going to just use them to help with crowd control. So they really have dual functions. Uh, the first one I'll talk about is Black Hole. Now, uh, I'm using the Lightning version of Black Hole. They all do the same thing, but the Lightning version, I'm using it because with Talrasha's set, at two pieces is going to give you a different Meteor. So that gives you better spread of damage just because you're getting more Meteors out there. It's really great. Main function with this is, is that when you got a group of mobs, you see them in the distance, you Black Hole them so they all come together, and for two seconds, they're not attacking. So it gives you plenty of time to approach. And you could approach by, of course, running in and just starting to slash away because your explosive blast is going to go off on its own when you get in there. Or you can teleport in. Now, with teleport, this is something where Calamity is awesome because the Tarasha set is pretty finicky. So you've got to make sure that you've got spells that you cast and deal damage. And I'll explain about that a little bit later when we go over the set. But teleport qualifies, so it will cast the arcane rune for you. The stun, especially after everything's been grouped together from Black Hole, will give you plenty of time for the arcane meteor to hit. And the arcane meteor is a lot of damage. You know, it's based off of how much arcane power you have at that moment. And since you're casting it for free, you're going to have a lot more arcane power to put into the spell. So it's really going to deal damage for you. And so th it makes this great for the approach because you, you start off with all your meteors right at the beginning um, of the fight. And I'll show you later that it, it makes a difference. It makes a really big difference. Um, it's also one of those things that with these two spells, these two spells are really affected by your gear choice especially cooldown reduction, because the more you're able to cast these, the easier it is for you to control the battlefield, and they really do give you a lot of extra damage, not only through the meteors, but just from casting themselves, because they keep everything close, they keep everything tight and stunned, so that way your melee spells are having the most impact. So, really good. Um, next thing I want to talk about is going to be your protection. So that's important. You don't want to die. And you've got to find a way to be the least amount squishy as possible. And so uh, armor spell is, of course, great for that. And the one I'm using right now is ice armor crystallize. But early on, you could also use energy armor because energy armor is a really stout armor bonus. And it's got a lot of benefits. It could help you out with, uh, with critical hit chance while you don't have maybe the best gear to support that to help you with your damage. It could help you by making really, really hard hitting attacks hit for a lot less with the rune that makes it drop down to 35% of your health. So there's a lot of options there. It could help you flat out with your resists. Uh, 
Later on, once you have gear, I think crystallized really has better function for you. Um, the mobs are frozen or chilled whenever they hit you, and it also gives you an armor Should bonus increase as well, along with straight so up small. damage reduction, um, you know, melee damage reduction, which is really nice with this build because you're going to be up close. So the more melee damage reduction you can get, you know, to help out with the armor bonus, the better off you are. So uh, that's really, really good. Now, the final spell slot is a freebie. Uh, I'll talk about this choice of Frost Nova last, but you can do whatever you want with it. You could use Magic Weapon to just increase your damage. You could also use Magic Weapon once you've got two pieces of Talrasha to be responsible for firing two meteors while you're casting Flame Blades, because if you have, say, the Shock Rune for Magic Weapon on there, then Flame Blades will cast the Lightning Meteor as well. It'll cast them simultaneously, or whenever the cooldown's ready, so that's great. Um, and that'll give you a chance to where if you want to use a different black hole, or if you want to change things up, you've got opportunities to play with the build. Now, keep in mind, later on, the other two pieces of the Talrasha set, they only function when you cast a spell that deals damage. So, things that are already out and dealing damage, such as Magic Weapon, or like familiar because a familiar can give you a lot of it can give you damage and it can give you a benefit as well it can also cast a meteor of a different element just based on which familiar you pick but it's not going to activate the four piece or the six piece uh, bonuses from Talrasha so you've got to be really careful with those because you're just not going to get the full benefit once you found find those pieces and you're getting those set bonuses and they're extremely helpful I just got the six piece a couple of weeks ago, and uh, you know, I, it exponential boost. It immediately made it to where I was farm status on T6. It's crazy, absolutely crazy. But let's get back to my choice. Okay, so the reason I've got Frost Nova is mainly because I was able to get a Halo of our Arliss. So. You know, Frost Nova is something that because of the ice armor that I'm wearing, not only am I getting a ridiculous amount of damage reduction because of that ring. See, right now damage reduction, my melee damage reduction is nothing. But as soon as I cast ice armor, I've got 59% melee damage reduction. And now when I'm hit, this is going to be cast for me. And now, since I'm going to be in melee range anyways, it's like a free dot. I don't even have to use it in my rotation because the mobs are going to hit me and they're going to cast it for me. This also deals damage. And so regardless of whether I cast it or the mobs hit me and it's cast because of that, it does activate all of the bonuses from the Talrasha set. So it gives me my Ice Meteor. It gives me the resist boost. It gives me the attack boost to where I can have all four elemental attack boosts running at the same time, which is a ridiculous amount of damage. It is really, really good. And because I don't have to cast it in my, in my rotation, it's awesome because the dot is just going to be there. And when it's recast, the dot's going to be way more damaging. And so it, it it's just one of those things that's going to build upon itself. So definitely worth a look once you've got the gear that can support it uh really a, been a great find especially with coupled with that ring great purpose um so we've got the spells out of the way um, the next thing i want to talk about is, are the passive skills that i'm working with and so the first piece i want to talk about is things that are helping protect you more um, so I'll start with Unwavering Will. So if you're standing still, it gives you boost to armor, resist, damage. More armor, more resist, you can't go wrong. Great. A little extra damage on the side, it's hard to argue with. And that's all in one passive. Awesome. Now, with how this build is, you know, in a perfect world, you would just teleport in, cut things to pieces, your cooldown would come up fast enough to where you could teleport to the next mob, cut things to pieces. 
So you'll get this damage boost often because you don't necessarily need to move around a lot to make this work, which is great. Now coupled with this, we've got blur, just straight up damage reduction. You can't go wrong with it. This is something I'm still kind of experimenting with, so I may take it out if it ends up being redundant and it's not it's not doing as well as I think it is doing right now. But for right now it is. It's in. It's good. You can't go wrong with it, of course. Um, Illusionist is really interesting because Illusionist is something that's not necessary with this build, but the movement speed increase is great and the fact that it gives me a chance to reset teleport early even when my cooldown's been reduced is even better because if I run in and I take a lot of damage I can almost guarantee that I'm going to be able to get out before I die so that's some good peace of mind to have to know that you have a chance to escape and you're still going to have the stun to help you escape as well so you know not everything is going to get a chance to hit you on your way out it's really good um, evocation reduces all cooldowns for 20 percent cooldown reduction is your best friend it is what you want to have if you don't have anything else you want to have cooldown reduction so that way black hole explosive blast and teleport are all benefiting so you can cast them more often the more explosive blasts you're auto casting the more damage you're doing the more black holes you have access to, the better crowd control, and more damage you're doing. Same with teleport. The more often you have access to teleport, the better mobility you have, the more crowd control you have with the stun. It just... Cooldown reduction does so much for this build that it, it is the first thing that you need to make sure that you work on. And I'm going to talk about it a lot, so go ahead and get used to it. I apologize in advance if you already knew. Light. Um, now that we've got everything out of the way as far as the spells, we've got everything out of the way as far as the passives, I want to talk about gear. So, starting at yellow, you know, gear is going to be one of those things where you basically just gear up for cooldown reduction, get as much as you can, so that way your spells are doing the work for you. Once you start getting the gear, though, the gear is really going to help out. So let's start with the big one, Talrasha's set. Okay, so this build really shines when you get all six. When you have the six set bonus, but the journey to get there is really fun. It's really awesome. So at two pieces, you get meteors, and this build is already designed to give you all four meteors for free. That's a lot of damage for free. And uh, it's going to give it to you on a consistent basis. There's not a lot of work that you have to do to make this happen. And so enjoy your meteors. They're fun. That used to be the high end of the set. I'm glad they changed it. But I remember when I first got the old Talrasha set, and I was like, man, I can cast free meteors now. Fantastic. So it's much better. Now it's the first thing you get a hold of. So it's crazy. Now, uh, with the ring of Royal Grandeur, you've got plenty of room to where you get another four-piece set bonus. Uh, I'm actually wearing three sets right now. Um, you know, I've got a four-piece and I've got a three-piece on along with Talrasha. So, you know, I'm rocking and rolling. Pretty cool. But, you know, you've got a lot of room. Um, you, could do mag you could do Magnum Opus or you could do Firebirds. I like Firebirds. But at four pieces of Magnum Opus, you know, you're still going to get, what, 2,000 damage per second from, you're going to get 2,000 damage per second from the, uh, from slow time. I forgot my other wizard has uh, my Magnum Opus set on, so I can't look at it. But 2,000 damage per second is ridiculous. And the 2,000 damage per second is going to be based on an element that you're casting, so that'll make slow time be able to cast a meteor for you so that may change the way to play this game you may not need explosive blast because if you put that up you're like oh 
that's that's a wrap right there for everything that's close to you. You just like teleport, slow time, take you two grand per second while I whoop on you. Yeah. Now, as ridiculous as that is, you're not getting the other benefits like to Arcane Orb and all the other stuff that you know Magnum Opus helps. It's nothing to sneeze at though. Now um, I went the Firebird way, and so I've got the four piece bonus for the Firebirds. Uh, so what that did is it gave me not only a revive every five minutes, it gave me another meteor <laughs> when they kill me, and more than likely that meteor is going to be ramped up from Talrasha's attack bonuses from the six piece. But it also makes it to where a spectral blade and explosive blast cause three enemies to explode, and that explosion starts out at 400% weapon damage as fire in 10 yards. So that explosion also ramps up real quick when you think about the bonus that Tarasha puts on it, the little bit of the, the help you're getting from fire blades, and just it all comes together really, really well, which you'll see in uh, the run that we'll do just, at, just to demo the build in, in a little bit. But, uh, you know, once you get once you get to this level, I started really chainsawing stuff with just those two spells alone because the damage bonus is just so large that it's just like, hey, take 20 million from Spectral Blade. What? It, I, you heard me. Take 20 million from Spectral Blade. It's crazy. Absolutely nuts. Now, uh, when I first was doing this... Uh, this guide it was a couple of days ago I hadn't found Talrasha's belt yet so I didn't have this set on now this set helps with cooldown reduction cooldown reduction is your friend right now I'm running at 52.25% cooldown reduction it ramps up even higher because I've got swiftness on so my cooldown reduction gets really really high in the middle of the fight which I'll have, I'll have to bring the screen up so we can see how it looks while I'm running through the rift. And so that way we can you can really see how everything plays off each other. Um, now my plan is to get Tegu soon once I don't necessarily need to have this life per second. Right now I still need it. still good. Helps me heal up. So I've got this. If I can find a way to get around this crit then I'll pop a socket and I'll put Tegux in there for damage and armor I just I've just got to figure out if that's worth it just got to figure it out but I, I want to get Tegux in there because it plays so well with swiftness you'll have cooldown reduction attack bonus and armor bonus which is hard to argue with with the legendary gems but uh yeah, so three sets, all of them play really well together, and you still got a little room, um, and you're going to get even more room once the update happens, because then you can have a lot of the pass. you can have a lot of legendary abilities as passives, that'll just be nuts, because then you won't need a Ring of Royal Grandeur anymore, so it can give you a chance to use stuff like Focus and Restraint, that's just going to be dumb, but can't wait for it i might even go try it on the ptr um, once it doesn't have a ninety-six thousand hour queue okay so it hasn't been that long and if you play things like uh hard mode public games you can get a pretty quick game going by like 30 minutes or less but hey eh, whatever all right so last couple things i want to touch base on is one combat modi modifiers you want to go after and then after that the basic game plan of this build so combat modifiers first one just like i've been saying throughout the whole guide it's cooldown reduction this is your friend this is the one you use this is the one you build up first no exceptions if you have high cooldown reduction then the build is going to work it's going to work well for you, regardless of what stage you are gear-wise. Of course, the more gear you get, it's going to look even better. 
cooldown down reduction is your friend because that's going to make sure that you can function with the core benefits this build gives you. All right. Um, you know, the cooldown reduction, especially for explosive blasts, if you get a hold of like a Wanda Wo that triples your explosive blast, then you may not need it as much because your damage is going to be there. Like, I won't need Borns. If I get a Wanda Wo, then Borns is gone. And what that would do for me personally is it would let me use Firebird Shoulders, Tyrosh's Mask. So then I can have Frostborn. And so a Frostburn Gloves, which will allow that dot from Frost Nova to start freezing stuff. Can you imagine how ridiculous that will get? The only thing that would be worse or that would be better is if I get a hold of the if I get a hold of the sword that if stuff is frozen every now and then you just deal ten thousand percent. So if I get a hold of that sword, I'm getting frostburn gauntlets and you can call it a day. That's a thank you. It's been my pleasure. Yeah, that that's that's a wrap. So Maybe that will happen. I don't know. But, you know, there's still a lot of fun things you can do to tweak this build up. Anyways, it's cooldown reduction. Greatest thing since sliced bread. Greatest thing since toasted bread. Whatever you want to call it. The next one is really interesting. And so watching Quincy's builds, he said area damage is amazing. And I have to agree. Because if you're 20% of the time, if you're doing 50% of your damage to more than one mob just for free that is pretty nuts it makes sense you know even if you don't do the exact math and you think about it that way you're like why would you pass it up so that's what I put all my paragon points in I haven't really been able to, been able to fit it into my gear yet but that's what I want to work on after I kind of get the rest of the legendary settled in so looking forward to that crit, crit chance crit damage they give you the big numbers they really work well um, it may be the thing to do before area damage in some cases, but later on with the update or with what you're going for, you know, you may go with like a broken promise ring. So you're not doing crit chance at all. You're just doing critical hit damage. So then you can just focus on min maxing, get perfect rolls on amulets for hundred percent, you know, stuff like that. So that may be a better way to go about it because this build's going to attack enough to where that five seconds you have 100% crit is going to be dumb. That five seconds is going to be just ridiculous. So, much, so many yellow numbers that doesn't make sense. Elemental damage is something I haven't really worried about. You know, I've changed, if I had spells on gear, I've changed them to the spells that I use. But again, that's not something I'm worried about because it it works out. You're using all of the elements. So... Whichever ones you have increases on, they're going to benefit, and that's great. But the, the actual set bonuses are going to do more than enough themselves, so not really something that I worry about. Um, this build itself is, ar is really arcane power efficient, so you can do a lot of stuff to your liking. You know, the, the, the number one thing is really just, just have a cooldown reduction. If you do that, then you can really do whatever you want for the rest of it. And it'll still come out pretty well. All right, so last thing we, we're going to talk about before we do the run is uh, just your normal game plan. So, like I was talking about earlier, the main way that things normally go is you see the mobs at a distance, group them together with a black hole, gives you plenty of time to teleport in. They're still stunned. That's two meteors. Then you cast Frost Nova, to start the dot, or you don't cast Frost Nova, it doesn't matter because eventually they'll cast for you. That gives you another meteor, starts the dot, and then you go to work because Explosive Blast is going to auto cast, Flame Blades, you're getting all that crazy damage from that. And then, in most cases, unless you really need to reposition mobs, go ahead and wait out the eight seconds so that way when you cast Black Hole and teleport, you get your next meteor. 
So if it's not a pressing issue, you might as well wait until the eight-second cooldown is done. So that way you're not missing a meteor. Because that's going to be more damage than what either of those spells... Well, it's definitely going to be more damage than what Teleport does by itself. And it's going to be really helpful damage versus the two seconds you're waiting by casting more Spectral Blade and more Explosive Blast um, for a Lightning Black Hole. You know, you're really not going to make that up if you keep missing the Meteor. You know, um, and then that's, 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 re that's really it. You know, you want to try to teleport out if you're taking damage, so that way you can reset the situation. And uh, that's, that's all there is to it. And um, that the, the waiting the, until the eight seconds will also help you reset Kalrosh's bonuses effectively as well. So it all plays together well. But that is it. That's the build. You know, it, it, it does a lot of things on its own. So, you know, I may have been a little bit long-winded explaining it. Sorry. Let's go ahead and jump in. We'll do just do a T6 run so that way you can see it in action. And, uh, yeah, I hope you try it out. And, you know, let me know what you think of it. You can send me a message on Twitch. You can leave me a note in the comment section below on YouTube Unleash because I'll port this over to YouTube as well. Champion. Let's go ahead and go to work. We've got the armor on. We've got the autocast. Put the flash. All right. Hold. Hold for All meteors. Thank you. Another teleport. Need more time. Get the arcane meteor. Keep the light. Might as well go real quick. The arcane meteor is not playing games. Not, not playing games at all. Notice at the bottom how quickly you get the throwing to the 60. So all of your attacks have that. Ridiculous, you do wild you death estimate. 600% boost your life. And you can trust your numbers that it's there. Those explosions are separate ways, yes. Okay, okay. Need more time. 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 And so I, I can't imagine, you know. Everyone who's got way more Paragon levels than me. Direct and shop even better. So. Right now, that was working off the dust. Oh. Yeah. Tell you what was interesting though is that earlier today, I don't know if it's called the not at that level, but I did play the rift where it was just all cow. Wow. That quest where they just gave them the candy experience like candy? Wow. And then the that was absolutely insane. Absolutely. Got a lot of people going. A really great thing about this is that this build still does well with single target damage. Um, you know, a lot of games, what happens is, is they do great damage, AoE, great AoE damage. So, a lot of mobs around, they, they, they clean house. You know, because a lot of things just play off of the more mobs that are there, the more damage you're going to milk out of it. And so, the problem with that is, is when you get to a single target, it takes forever. Uh, you still does well with single target damage. It, it, it still 
still fighting as well. So you're still getting all of your, you're still getting all of your attack bonuses, regardless of how many targets you have. So, you know, if you're still going to you know, really see a benefit, you know, your dots, your, your, your dots are still going to do well. You're not sacrificing really important. Tag them and bag them. That's it. Need more time. Your grave awaits. Yeah, I could not believe that that, that cow rift was, it went 10 levels deep. I didn't think it was going to end. I saw, and what was even better is, I saw every goblin. I saw every goblin in one. And then there was conduit fires after. Conduit fires. They might be like, I don't know if you know about the place in Mario where you start out with Starman. And if you can get to the next block before you run out of invincibility and the mother can start. If you get to the block where you're not invincible or you can kill I don't know. Uh, that's what it reminded me of. It reminded me of the conduit kind of block. Oh man, there's another conduit kind of block. So I was just running around and maybe if I can get to the next one, there'd be another conduit kind of block. So I usually just get it. Alright. Good guard. So yeah, definitely on single targets unless you need to. Just wait and do the second round of meteors after the eight seconds is up. I need to go back. The extra arcane meteor by itself. Worth this weight in gold. Great. Turns turns your teleport into millions of damage. <laughs> Makes absolutely no sense. But uh that's it. That, that's the build. I, I really hope everyone enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed making this video. I had to get this down a couple of times, but uh, this one, this one looks like it's gonna be, it's gonna be great. So, uh, appreciate you watching. Appreciate you hanging out with me. Uh, be sure try the build out. Let me know in the comment section below um, in YouTube if you like it. Send me a message on Twitch. Tell me about it. Um, I'm sorry I didn't have my chat up, so I'm not sure uh, what was going in there, but yeah. I definitely, if you like it, subscribe to the YouTube channel. You know, help me out on Twitch too. I'm, I'm working on getting equipment together and uh, getting things ready for uh, my training with uh, Team Yomi um, up in Atlanta for Mortal Kombat X. So that way I'll be able to start the tournament circuit, even though the first year it's kind of done after uh, Evo's over. Well, not really, but, you know, that's a, it's a big thing. So, but uh, I, I appreciate everybody coming by. Until next time, uh, this is Lee Van Dam, and I hope everyone takes care. Be safe. God bless. Oh, and I'll have the video for me 
doing this with all yellow gear up shortly as well. So, you know, stay tuned for that, and I'll have that posted soon too. All right. Thanks, everybody.